Good morning. We have an exciting one for you today. We started this 12 day event 12 days ago with the launch of O1, our first reasoning model. It's been amazing to see what people are doing with that uh, and very gratifying to hear how much people like it. We view this as sort of the beginning of the next phase of AI, where you can use these models to do increasingly complex tasks that require a lot of reasoning. And so for the last day of this event, um, we thought it would be fun to go from one frontier model to our next frontier model. Today, we're gonna talk about that next frontier model, um, which you would think logically maybe should be called O2, um, but out of respect to our friends at Telefonica and in the grand tradition of OpenAI being really, truly bad at names, it's gonna be called O3. Actually, we're not gonna launch, uh, not launch, we're going to announce two models today, O3 and O3 Mini. O3 is a very, very smart model. Uh, O3 Mini is an incredibly smart model, but still, uh, but a really good at performance and cost. So to get the bad news out of the way first, we're not gonna publicly launch these today. Um, the good news is we're gonna make them available for public safety testing starting today. You can apply and we'll talk about that later. We've taken safety testi testing seriously as our models get uh, more and more capable. And at this new level of capability, we wanna try adding a new part of our safety testing procedure, which is to allow uh, public access for researchers that wanna help us test. We'll talk more at the end about when these models, uh, when we expect to make these models generally available. But we're so excited uh, to show you what they can do to talk about their performance. We've got a little surprise, we'll show you some demos. Uh, and without further ado, I'll hand it over to Mark to talk about it. Cool, thank you so much, Sam. So my name is Mark, I lead research at OpenAI. And I wanna talk a little bit about O3's capabilities. Now, O3 is a really strong model at very hard technical benchmarks. And I want to start with coding benchmarks. You can bring those up. So on software style benchmarks, we have Sweebench Verified, which is a benchmark consisting of real world software tasks. We're seeing that O3 performs at about 71.7% .7 accuracy, which is over 20% better than our O1 models. Now, this really signifies that we're really climbing the frontier of utility as well. On competition code, we see that O1 achieves an ELO on this contest coding site called CodeForce is about 1891. At our most aggressive high test time compute settings, we're able to achieve almost like a 27-27 ELO here. So Mark was a competitive programmer, actually still coaches competitive yes, programming. Very, yeah. very good. What, do you, what is your? I think my best at a comparable site was about 2,500. That's tough. <laughs> well, I, I will say, you know, our chief scientist, um, this is also better than our chief scientist Jakob's score. I think there's one guy at OpenAI who's still like a 3,000 something. Yeah, Gets that'll be- a few be, more months to yeah, hopefully, enjoy. Hopefully okay. we have a couple of months to enjoy there. Great, That's yeah. an, I mean, this, is, it's in, this model is incredible yeah. at programming. Yeah, and not just programming, but also mathematics. So we see that on competition math benchmarks, just like competitive programming, we achieve very, very strong scores. So O3 gets about 96.7% accuracy versus an O1 performance of 83.3% on the Amy. What's your best Amy score? I did get a perfect score once. All on right. This, so I'm safe. But <laughs> yeah, um, really what this signifies is that O3 um, often just misses one question whenever we test it on this very hard feeder exam for the USA Mathematical Olympiad. There's another very tough benchmark, which is called GPQA Diamond. And this measures the model's performance on PhD level science questions. Here we get another state-of-the-art number, 87.7%, which is about 10% better than our O1 performance, which was at 78%. Just to put this in perspective, if you take an expert PhD, they typically get about 70% in kind of their field of strength here. So one thing that you might notice, yeah, from, from some of these benchmarks is that we're reaching saturation for a lot of them or nearing saturation. So, the last year has really highlighted the need for really harder benchmarks to accurately assess where our frontier models lie. And I think a couple have emerged as fairly promising over the last months. One in particular I wanna call out is Epic AI's Frontier Math benchmark. Now, you can see the scores look a lot lower than they did for the, the previous benchmarks we showed. And this is because this is considered today the toughest mathematical benchmark out there. This is a data set that consists of novel, unpublished, and also very hard. These are tests. extremely hard. Yeah, very, very hard problems. Even Turnstile houses, you know, it would take professional mathematicians hours or even days to solve one of these problems. And today, all offerings out there um, have less than 2% accuracy um, on, on this benchmark. And we're seeing with O3, in aggressive test time settings, we're able to get over 25%. Yeah. Um, That's awesome. In addition to Epic AI's Frontier Math Benchmark, we have one more surprise for you guys. 
So I want to talk about the ARC benchmark at this point, but I would love to invite one of our friends, Greg, who is the president of the ARC Foundation, on to talk about this benchmark. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Sam and Mark, thank you very much for mm -hmm. having us today. Of course. Mm -hmm. Hello, everybody. My name is Greg Camrad, and I'm the president of the ARC Prize Foundation. Now, ARC Prize is a nonprofit with the mission of being a North Star towards AGI through and during benchmarks. So our first benchmark, ARC AGI, was developed in 2019 by Francois Cholet in his paper on the measure of intelligence. However, it has been unbeaten for five years. Now, in AI world, that's like, it feels like centuries is where it is. So the system that beats ARC AGI is gonna be an important milestone towards general intelligence. But I'm excited to say today that we have a new state-of-the-art score to announce. Before I get into that though, I wanna talk about what ARC AGI is. So I would love to show you an example here. ARC AGI is all about having input examples and output examples. Well, they're good. They're good? Okay. <laughs> input examples and output examples. Now the goal is you wanna understand the rule of the transformation and guess it on the output. So Sam, what do you think is happening in here? Probably putting a dark blue square in the empty space. See, yes, that is exactly it. Now, that is really, um, it's easy for humans to uh, intuitively guess what that is. It's actually surprisingly hard for AI to, know, to understand what's going on. So I wanna show one more hard example here. Now, Mark, I'm gonna put you on the spot. What do you think is going on in this uh, task? Okay, so you take each of these yellow squares, you count the number of colored kind of squares there, and you create a border of that width. That, that is exactly it, and that's much quicker than most people, so <laughs> congratulations on that. Um, what's interesting, though, is AI has not been able to get this problem thus far, and even though that we verified that a panel of humans could actually do it. Now, the unique part about ArcAGI is every task requires distinct skills. And what I mean by that is we won't ask, there won't be another task that you need to fill in the corners with blue squares. And, but we do that on purpose. And the reason why we do that is because we wanna test the model's ability to learn new skills on the fly. Mm -hmm. We don't just want it to uh, repeat what it's already memorized. That, that's the whole point here. Now, ARC AGI version one took five years to go from 0% to 5% with leading frontier models. However, today, I'm very excited to say that O3 has scored a new state of the art score that we have verified. On low compute for uh, O3, it has scored 75.7 on ARC AGI's semi-private holdout set. Now, this is extremely impressive because this is within the uh, compute requirements that we have for our public leaderboard, and this is the new number one entry on ARC AGI Amazing. Pub, so congratulations Thank to that. Thank you so much, yeah. Now, uh, as a capabilities demonstration, when we ask O3 to think longer and we actually ramp up to high compute, O3 was able to score 85.7% on the same hidden holdout set. This is especially important. 87.5. Sorry, 87.5, yes. This is especially important because um, human performance is, co uh, is comparable at 85% threshold. So being above this is a major milestone. And we have never tested a system that has done this or any model that has done this beforehand. So this is new territory in the ARC AGI world. Congratulations with that. Congratulations for making such a great benchmark. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, when I look at these scores, I realize um, I need to switch my worldview a little bit. I need to fix my AI intuitions about what AI can actually do and what it's capable of, uh, especially in this O3 world. But the work also is not over yet, and these are still the early days of AI. So um, we need more enduring benchmarks like ARC AGI to help measure and guide progress. And I am excited to accelerate that progress. And I'm excited to partner with OpenAI next year to develop our next frontier benchmark. Amazing. You know, it's also a benchmark that we've been targeting and been on our mind for a very long time. So we're excited to work with you in the future. Worth mentioning that we didn't, yeah. we target and we think it's an awesome benchmark. Yeah. We didn't go to specific We didn't do specific this. Training. This is just, yeah. sure, you know, mm -hmm. the general of three. Yeah. But yeah, really appreciate the partnership. And yeah. this was a fun one to do. Absolutely. And even though this has done so well, Arc Prize will continue in 2025. And anybody can find out more at arcprize.org. Great. Thank, Thank you so much for having me on. Absolutely. Yeah.